Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I will explain to you what is the decorator design pattern and how and why we can implement and use it in the C sharp language. So decorator pattern is one of the structural design pattern. Under this pattern, we attach additional features to objects in runtime. The beauty of using the decorator pattern is that we can decorate an object over and over again to extend its usage. So before we understand how to implement the decorator pattern, first we should figure out why do we even use such a pattern. The decorator pattern solves the problem of extending a class's functionality without adding concrete changes to the class structure. One way is to extend the class but inheritance is applied to the entire class and we cannot mix and match functionalities together as we want them to. You will see how this is a problem when I will explain the code example. Also, decorator pattern can be confused with other patterns like adapter and proxy. The adapter provides a different interface while a decorator enhances the already existing interface. A proxy provides same interface but the decorator enhances the interface. Alright, so now let's get started with a very simple code example and hopefully you will be able to understand how this pattern works. So before I begin, I want to list down the steps which I will be using to implement the decorator pattern in the C sharp language. The first thing that we need is a base interface which is common to the concrete class the base decorator and all the different individual decorator classes. Next, we will need a single concrete class implementation which we need to decorate using additional classes. After that, we will need a base decorator class from which several decorators can derive. The derived decorators will have their own functionality. They will then delegate to the base decorator. And then finally, the client code specifies the decorator wrapping order and the decorators which are required for the concrete class. So I will be creating the following entities in this order to implement the decorator pattern in the C sharp language. The first item is going to be the base interface which is going to be common to everything. Next, we will have the concrete implementation of the class which we are going to decorate. The third one is going to be the base decorator from which we are going to derive more decorators. And then finally, we are going to have all of the concrete decorators. Alright, so over here, I will be showing the example of a pizza and how we can enhance that pizza by adding more toppings to it. To implement the pizza, we are going to have the concrete implementation of its class and then to enhance the pizza and then to add more toppings to it, we are going to have concrete decorator classes. By the way, you know what a pizza is, right? Well, if you don't, then you are already missing so much in your life. So just go and grab a pizza today. Okay, so to begin with, first we will need to create an interface for the concrete class and for all the decorator classes. So interface and this is going to be called as I pizza. Now inside it, we are going to have a method which is going to be called as get pizza type. So our interface is done and now it's time to create the concrete class for the pizza. This is going to be called as class pizza and this is going to be implemented from the i pizza interface now inside it we need to provide the implementation details of this get pizza type method so let's just do that so this is going to be public string get pizza type this is just going to return a simple string which will indicate what this class is for so this is just a normal class for a pizza so we are going to return this string that this is a normal pizza all right so the concrete class has been finished and now it's time to create first the base decorator and then we are going to implement concrete decorators from the base decorator the base pizza decorator class is going to be called as pizza decorator and this is also going to be implemented from the i pizza interface now again we need to provide the implementation details of this get pizza type method so i'm just going to copy this method from over here and for now let's just return an empty string in this concrete pizza decorator class we need to have a field for the i pizza type and we are going to set this field's value by injecting an implementation of the pizza class object so let's just have a private field and this is going to be of the type i pizza interface and we are going to call it as underscore pizza now it's time to create the constructor for this pizza decorator so public pizza decorator and we are going to have the argument to set this underscore pizza fields value so let's just have that argument i pizza pizza and then we can set this value like this underscore pizza equals to the value of this argument now in this get pizza type method instead of returning an empty string we are going to call the underscore pizzas get pizza type method and then 
we are going to return the value which is being returned from the implementation which is being injected into the constructor we are going to derive concrete decorator classes from this base decorator so first let's add our first concrete decorator class for our pizza and this is going to add extra cheese to our normal pizza so this is our normal pizza which is this class and now to create a new decorator to add the extra cheese we need to create a new class which is going to be called as cheese decorator and this is going to be derived from the pizza decorator class now inside this first we need to call the constructor which is going to be public cheese decorator now we need to have the argument for the pizza implementation so that we can mix and match different additional functionalities which we can use with the concrete pizza class so let's just do that so this is going to be i pizza and then pizza now all we need to do is to call the base constructor and then we need to pass this pizza argument as an argument for the base constructor so let's just do that so base pizza and then we can leave the constructors actual implementation as empty because we just need to inject the pizza implementation and then set the base classes pizza as the argument which is being passed in the constructor and now we need to provide this cheese decorators implementation of get pizza type because what we will do is we will first let the base classes do their work and then we are going to decorate that implementation with additional functionality which will be defined in this class so to do that first we need to convert this get pizza type of this pizza decorator class as a virtual method so that we will be able to override it in the derived decorator classes so let's just override this get pizza type class over here and now instead of virtual we are going to have the override keyword in this methods body first we are going to call the base classes get pizza type method which is going to return the pizza which has been created so far and then we can decorate that return value with additional functionality so for that let's first create a string field which is going to be called as type so type is going to be base dot get pizza type and now we are going to decorate this string type with additional stuff so we are just going to add extra cheese to the pizza and to do that i'm just going to add more string to it so let's just add a new line and we can simply write with extra cheese and now finally let's just return this type so this is how our cheese decorator is going to work I will show you how this entire thing will come together when we will write the client code. So we have the cheese decorator and now it's time to add a new decorator class to add extra tomatoes with the message with extra tomatoes. The rest of this stuff is similar to the cheese decorator. We have the tomato decorator constructor and then we are passing on the injected pizza implementation to the base constructor. Let's also have one last decorator which is going to be the onion decorator which is just going to add extra onions as toppings to our base pizza. So we have the three decorator classes the cheese decorator the tomato decorator and the onion decorator now it's time to bring everything together when we will write the client code so first let's just create a new pizza class which is going to be of the type i pizza so this is just a normal pizza and if we will write to the console the type of this pizza then the string which will be written is going to be this one this is a normal pizza so let's just do that pizza dot get pizza type so the string which is printed over here is this is a normal pizza now let's just add some extra cheese to our pizza and to do that i'm going to create a new cheese decorator class and this is going to be created by first creating a new object and then calling its constructor and then we will need to send in the implementation of this pizza as the constructor's argument this can be done like this new cheese decorator and then sending in the pizza as an argument so let's see what our pizza has become after we have created a new cheese decorator so we need to call cheese decorator dot get pizza type we can no longer use a normal pizza now let's just run it so now this is a normal pizza with some extra cheese cheese now it's time to go all the way in and add the toppings for the extra tomatoes and extra onions to do that i'm going to create new objects for the tomato decorator and the onion decorator the order in which we will define and use the decorator classes is going to determine how they are implemented so for this client code first we are creating the normal pizza and then we are adding the extra cheese and then we are adding extra tomatoes and then onions so the order is going to be first they will be the cheese and then they will be extra tomatoes and then the extra onions and we will have to use the final decorator class to get the type of pizza and this is going to be the onion decorator and now let's just run this code so this is a normal pizza with extra cheese extra tomatoes and extra onions if you want to change the order then you will have to change the order in which the decorator classes are being used 
so over here we can change the order like this first we can have the onion and then we can have the tomato but we need to provide the cheese decorator as an argument to the onion decorator and then we need to provide the onion decorator as an argument to the tomato decorator and finally we will need to use this tomato decorator i hope that i'm not confusing you this example is as simple as it can get so let's now run the code and see what is being printed so now we will first have the cheese and then we will have onions and then we will have tomatoes in this way we can mix and match functionalities this is where the decorator pattern is most useful when we want to interchange and mix and match the different steps of functionalities or processes that we want to run on any kind of data then the decorator pattern is most useful and this is how we can implement the decorator design pattern in the c-sharp language so that is pretty much everything that this video has to offer you guys do let me know what you think about this if you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area thank you so much for watching this video if you like it then please place a like on it and also subscribe to the code first channel this will make sure that you will always be the first one to get to know about the latest video updates i am nitish and i will see you in the next video till then take care of yourselves and have a great time